Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome in joining us for our squad announcement press conference. Um, yes, we have announced a squad of 32 players, which I think has been shared electronically to you guys. Uh, and I just thought maybe just to start off by, by giving you a little bit of the logistics uh, regarding the end of year tour. Uh, as you guys would know, the squad uh, it consists of uh, 32 players. Uh, the logistics in terms of the, the, the tour is we will um, leave uh, for our tour uh, um, on this weekend. Uh, we will travel to France and we will spend a week in France where we will have some training sessions or a training camp with some of our players, but also we will have some uh, rugby uh, or World Rugby 2023 events that we would attend. And uh, after that, we will travel to Cardiff uh, on the 31st of uh, October. And that's where we will start our end of year tour, uh, playing against uh, Wales on the 6th of November. Then the week after that, we will go over to uh, Edinburgh to play Scotland. And we will finish the tour um, uh, against England in London. Um, yeah, so if there's any questions, please fire away. Uh, this is uh, the city. Uh, Thank, thanks, Zina. Uh, Jacques, if you can hear me. Yep. Uh, Jacques, usually a year in tour is, well, often sometimes used as a way to blood young players. Were you tempted to bring a, a lot of fresh players in, younger, younger players in, and introduce them to the Springbok environment? Uh, or what's the reason behind sticking mainly with a tried and tested and the reasoning behind that uh, formula? Yeah, um, no, listen, uh, I, I think we've been building the squad since 2018. And I'm saying we, I, I, I started with the squad in 2018. And, and, and I think everybody, or what was well documented back then, that he had a six-year contract uh, that ended up to 2023. Uh, so I think we're constantly building the squad. And I think if you look at the, the, the squad that we selected, there's some young players coming in almost at every tier. Uh, and when I say tier, I think if you look at the, the, the props, you would see uh, Ox Nietzsche as a younger player coming into the mix now. If you look at Hooker, Joseph Dweba as a younger player coming into the mix now. If you look at um, a second rower, Salman Murat as a younger player coming into the mix now. If you look at back rowers, uh, you will see Jasper Visa as a younger player coming into the mix now. So I think we, uh, we, we continuously breeding younger players. I, I, I probably would say that at fly-off, uh, we didn't do that. Uh, even at the back three, uh, Apilele Fassi is, is a younger player that we, we're getting into the mix. So I think if you look at our squad, you'll probably see that we, we have an eye on consistency in terms of, uh, uh, of the players that we selected. And uh, uh, and we almost consistency and experience squad, like you rightly mentioned. And I think that's something that we will need uh, uh, going into the World Cup 2023. You know, uh, we, we're fortunate if you look at our squad uh, uh, um, of players that we selected that they are quite young. At the average age of our squad is 28. So although we have a very experienced squad, they, they're fairly young. <laughs> Nathan, you can ask your question. Uh, thank you, Zina. Um, Zina, um, Jock, similar squad to the rugby chance bar, a few injuries. Uh, uh, will uh, all overseas players be available, taking into account the obligations with their respective clubs? Uh, Nathan, yes, yeah, very similar squad. Uh, and yes, the, the players, the overseas based players will be available, uh, but only once Regulation 9 starts or uh, if the international window opens, which will be on the 31st of October. So obviously the international players who's playing and applying their trade currently with their clubs will not be available uh, for the first leg, uh, the, uh, for the first week that we are in France, but all the others will be available, yes. Craig Ray. Thanks, Ina. Hi, Jacques. Hope you're well. Um, Jacques, just to, I mean, obviously you want to win every test match, but the box haven't won uh, all matches on the Northern Hemisphere Tour since 2013. Is that um, 
is that an objective uh, of this tour? You know, not. Uh, I mean, I know results are part of a process, but you know, you want to build a sort of aura. Is this important that you try and you know tick that box? Um, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, and I think it's going to be a big challenge for us in terms of the, this Northern Hemisphere tour, especially if you go and look at the squads that that, that uh, the coaches have selected. Um, and and l- like you rightly say, we haven't we haven't won all three uh, almost in a decade, you know. So it's, it is a big challenge for us, and and that's probably with the eye that we that that we selected this squad, you know. We we twenty test matches out before twenty twenty three World Cup. So I think it's almost similar when when myself and Rossi came back, uh, maybe a little bit earlier. Uh, but I think the big thing for us is to build continuity, consistency, improve our game. You know, we lost a lot of uh, building uh, in 2020, uh, not participating in any, any international rugby. So it's almost trying to to build on our game, getting better at what we're trying to do. Uh, see where, is there, where there's opportunities for us to evolve uh, in terms of a squad and in terms of, of, of how we play the game. And I think, um, yeah, it's a good opportunity for us to get used to the conditions that we might face uh, in 2023. Sorry, and the Lions, I mean, because of the Lions series, do you think there's an added bit of spice to these three main games as they were all teams involved with the Lions? Yeah, I think, I think obviously, I think there will be a little bit of spice uh, um, and trying to rectify maybe what happened in the British and Irish Lions series. Uh, but I think uh, although there will be some spice coming uh, uh, from the British and Irish Lions series, I think it's one thing that we have to get used to as, as a Springbok side is that we are the reigning world champions, uh, that we are currently ranked number one in the world. So I think teams are going to come for us regardless uh, mm. because you are the team that they would like to to test themselves against, uh, as we found out in the rugby championship. You know, if you are a little bit off your game uh, and you play a team like Australia, I mean, that's the game. That's the, 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 the team they want to beat. So I think, yes, there will be a little bit of spice coming from the British and Irish Lions series. But I think uh, the nature of the beast is, listen, teams are going to come for us uh, uh, regardless. Mm. Felicia Thanks, Zina. Uh, after, afternoon, Jacques. I just wanted to find out, I mean, you mentioned uh, fly-off being the one position that you probably didn't have um, a, a new young player coming through or a younger player coming through. Um, were there any, was there a temptation to find or identify some of the younger fly-offs around the country that could have been um, included in the, in the, in the tour? Uh, but you also mentioned the fact that um, there are other guys that can play fly off. But was there uh, an inclination to get somebody that's more um, a specialist in the position um, outside of the Damien Willemses, the Franz Sustains that can play fly off? Um, yeah, I think uh, it's it's a good thing you mentioned there. I think there's a lot of versatility in terms of of, of our squad, and I, I and I know Cheslin is injured, but he's another guy that can step up and that have played fly off with Toulouse uh, at, uh, at club level, you know. But there's big versatility in our team, which 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 uh, probably plays into plays into our favour. Uh, but yet, yeah, no. Listen, it's not that we're not looking at any young flyers. I think uh, if you look at the the the, uh, the um, a couple of games that were got played in the URC, there's some some nice talent coming through there, and I think there's a lot of fringe players that are probably uh, unhappy and not unhappy, but um, I would I would say disappointed not being in the squad because they really have they, there's been some good performances in the URC. Um, and, and there's no door shut for any of them, you know. If they if they continue producing uh, performances like they did in the last couple of games, I, I, I mean, and and they keep on knocking the door down, like like a guy like uh, I would say Jasper did, you know, uh, going to England and and, and playing a, a unbelievable uh, premiership over there. That that will open the door for them. So there's no door shut for anybody. I mean, we will continue looking at the players and continue looking at at their performances. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we we if I say at fly off, uh, we if you look at a, a guy like Andre, Andre is still although he's been there over 50 Test matches, um, he's still a, he's still a re- relatively young fly off. Uh, 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 being I think he's 
he's 27 years old, you know, so so he'll probably be 30, 31 going into the next World Cup, which is which is not a bad age. So so and, and allies, I think 30, 31. So he'll probably be around 33 uh, going into the next World Cup. So we we are fortunate there, but like uh, if if people say, listen. Uh, yes, uh, we haven't brought through any young fly-offs yet. Yes, there's a couple that, that are playing, and, and we are uh, we are looking at them. But obviously, we went with uh, with Morna in 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 the um, uh, British and Irish Lions series and and into the rugby championship. We we wanted a little bit more experience there, but obviously Morna has now uh, um, um, announced his retirement out of international rugby. So there's a spot open for us. So we will def- definitely keep on uh, uh, looking. Hi, Shank. Um, thanks, Zina. Jock, um, I'll ask you um, two questions just to so get my um, things out of the way. Firstly, you mentioned Mornay. Apologies for, for putting the focus on a guy who's not in the squad, but I was just hoping I could perhaps get a few tribute words from you and just how much value is added to your guys' campaign in 2021. And then the second question, um, I just thought it was interesting. How much of a luxury is it um, when you have two squad members in Jasper Visa and Marco van Staden, who actually play as a combination at club level as well? I suppose that also is a is a real nice dynamic to have when you're on tour, you know, in a international assignment and you're thinking of maybe mixing and matching and knowing that these two guys actually know each other quite well, you know, um, at domestic level as well. Thank you. Uh, yeah, th- uh, yeah. Firstly, I'm going to start on Morna. Yeah, now listen. Uh, um, um, what uh, what can you say about Morna? He's been such a great servant to to South African rugby uh, and and a brilliant rugby player. Uh, so, firstly, contra- uh, uh, hats off to him in terms of what he what he's delivered on on the rugby field. I mean, uh, just a little bit of magic that he created. I say a little bit the magic that he created in terms of the the contest against the British and Irish Lions beating them twice and in the specific manner that he's done it just speaks volumes for the guy on the rugby field. And then off the rugby field, I mean, he's, he was phenomenal working uh, uh, with in this uh, uh, last uh, 20 weeks. I mean, he he, he always uh, contributed, always painted good pictures, helped us prepare the team, uh, was never scared to to give his, uh, his wisdom over to the younger players. Um, and so, yeah, he, he, volumes that I can talk about the guy. And then, obviously, I think the thing that probably tilted over to to him retiring out of international rugby is he's a big family man, you know. And I think, uh, especially with COVID, uh, access in in and out of squats isn't that easy for family members coming in and and stuff like that. And he really missed his family. And I think that was probably the big contributing factor in terms of him making his decision. And and uh, we can just uh, we felt uh, uh, obviously we wouldn't have selected him uh, in the British and Irish Lions group and and in the rugby championship if we didn't feel that there was a role for him still to play up to uh, 2023. But listen, we all in different stages of our lives and and uh, and uh, we different stages of where we are as a family, and uh, we we respect his decision and and just wish him well. And and like I say, what a fantastic guy! Not just a fantastic rugby player, but a fantastic fantastic guy off the field um, and and as a person. And then secondly, yeah, no, uh, it, it's nice for us to uh, to know that Jasper and uh, Marco are now uh, playing for Leicester uh, and they're doing quite well as a club uh, and they would know each other and they would probably get, uh, get a nice combination uh, uh, going uh, amongst the two of them, which will, will be, be uh, interesting to follow. And, and it will be nice to see their contribution with us at the end of the year. Ken Bonnet. Thanks, Sina. Uh, hi, Jean. Um, just on that uh, Regulation 9 window and that, um, presumably um, that's still fine then for all the international base players to play in that first test against Wales, especially since you have spend so much time together this year um, and then just the absence of fuck to play, does that change the way you're going to approach the games at all? No, firstly on Regulation 9 you know, Regulation 9 is uh, is like it was always you know, you normally, uh, how the regulation work is you normally get your players the Sunday before the test match 
and and we will get our players on on the Sunday before the Wales Test match. So you get one week of preparation uh, with the guys coming from their various clubs. So I think that 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 has never changed uh, um, like a past. So yes, we will have all our players available to us um, coming in on Sunday before we start our preparation for the first Wales Test match. So they are all available. Uh, I think the Welsh are playing a Test match on that Saturday. I think the Saturday the 30th, which is outside the the, the regulation nine or the Test match window. So even a team like Wales, they won't have the players like a, a Riz Ahmed who plays for Gloucester in England. You know, they will only have the local uh, Welsh players available for that Test match. So that's pretty much how the 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 the, the Test match window. Will Work. There's a specific time where the clubs cannot uh, uh, keep players uh, from uh, joining the, the national setup. And, and that's the window. And it starts on the 31st of October. So we will have all our international players available uh, for the first Welsh test match. And then obviously for the following two test matches after that. Uh, then, Ken, sorry, your second question was regarding oh, of the Yeah. No, listen. Not only Fof. I, I mean, if you look at the players that we that that we lost due to injury, uh, uh, Franz Malherbe, uh, Ergius Neiman, uh, Peter Steff, the toy not available. Fof de Klerk, uh, Jason Colby. Uh, I think if you look at that that group, they they are probably five players that are pretty much uh, if they are on form and medically fit and 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 from a from a physical aspect fit to play, they'll probably. Uh, uh, play, uh, make the match day 23, if not the match day 15. And, you know, I mentioned those five guys because they've all been uh, um, in a World Cup winning team, you know. So it's it's big losses there, uh, not only Faf, but all of them. And then, obviously, the other guys that injured are a guy like Reinhard Alstead, who, who, who was uh, on the bench for us playing against the British and Irish Lions in the first Test match, and then he got injured, and he struggled since then, uh, got back out of injury, but then he re-injured it again. So, uh, and then Nicolas Janssen uh, van Rensburg, who, who injured his ankle playing for Montpellier. So those were guys, those are seven guys that probably was in the mix uh, um, in the build-up uh, through the British and Irish Lions series and the Rugby Championship. Uh, and and they're big losses, you know. And But it, it, the nice thing, or there's no nice thing about injuries, but, I mean, the positive thing is now uh, you almost have the ability to create a little bit of squad depth and experience into your squad uh, with those uh, uh, seven players out. Uh, the next group must step in and, and fulfil their roles. Um, yeah, now Faf will be uh, will be a loss, but now uh, it will be between um, Herschel and Kubis Reinach and 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 uh, uh, stepping up uh, and Grant stepping up and and fulfilling those role. Uh, and 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 will we play differently? Yeah, obviously uh, players have different uh, uh, attributes, you know, and and we must make sure that we play towards the strength, uh, not only of our team but also uh, of our players. So we will. We will obviously will 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 have to have a look, and there's a lot of things that will play a factor into that. Yeah. Shark, sorry, just while you're on injuries, um, Johan Gursen, obviously a, a big injury a couple of weekends ago. Was he in your plans? I mean, we've been talking a lot about fly half. Uh, yeah, again, listen, obviously, like I said, there's there, there's a lot of fringe players who's who's on our uh, standby list. And Johan was definitely one of the guys that we were looking at, um, and uh, it's a, it's unfortunate uh, that that he's injured now, especially with Morna now deciding to 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 retire out of international rugby. Open uh, uh, probably opened up a little bit of a window there, you know. And 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 if you, if you go back into history. Uh, uh, a World Cup has never been won by a fly-off, I think, uh, who's, who's younger than 25 years old. You know, So uh, those those uh, key positions, game-driving positions, I would say 9, 10, 15, your line-out calling lock, your, the guys in charge of your scrums, your set pieces, uh, which people will normally call the spine, uh, um, you, you, you always would like to have experience in, the, in those uh, 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 positions. Uh, for uh, handling the pressure situations, especially if you're going to a World Cup. So, yeah, Johan Goosen, long-winded answer, but Johan Goosen was definitely somebody that we were looking at, yeah. Morgan Pick. Hi, 
Hi, Zina. Thanks. Uh, yeah, Jock, my question is answered um, just now regarding Mona Stain, and you've actually just answered the yarn question Mona as well, so I hand over to someone else. Thanks. Thanks, Morgan. Thanks, Morgan. Uh, Robin Duke. Coach uh, Jack, sorry, my background might be bad. Coach uh, Jack, you know, just a little change that you made in the squad. Uh, is it because of what you guys faced during the, uh, the 2019 World Cup that you, you, might, have, uh, you might face them uh, stronger? You know, and also just going to the issue of. Uh, of Yes, Robin. Is Robin? Robin, your line is very bad. Is it possible for you to type the question, please, in in the chat? And then we'll we'll go to to Gavin in the meantime while you chat while while you type your question, Robin. Okay. Okay. No problem. Thanks. Thanks, Ina. How's it, Sean? Um, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just, um, uh, Ken asked the question about Johan Gersen, which was sort of part of my question, but just looking at all your fly half options, I mean, all the youngsters at the moment seem to be injured at the moment. I mean, it's not like you had the option of, of taking a youngster. I mean, um, Jordan Hendricks is injured. Cade Woolhut is injured. I think I will, will go through all of them. They're, they're, they're injured and not a lot of them are spending a lot of time on the field. Is that, and I know you, I agree with what you're saying about not having a young fly half for the next World Cup, but you know, fly halves need time to develop. And I'm not talking about necessarily as a springbok. Uh, they need game time. Is it a concern for you that so many of the of those sort of players are, are, are getting so little game time at the moment just because they seem to be they seem to be injured? I'm talking about Cade and and Jade in particular. Um, yes, Gavin. Yeah, and and, and like, that, that's the that's probably the bad thing about injuries. You know, you would like to have a guy. I mean, we we all saw Jade and. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, Hendricks, I mean, producing uh, solid performances and getting used to the pace of the game. Um, and, yeah, it, it is frustrating. Uh, it would have been nice to see a guy going through a whole season, you know, uh, playing uh, 16, 17 matches and then going into the next season. It would be wonders for his development. But, I mean, it is quite frustrating from a national side because, but I mean, it is what it is, uh, and uh, uh, we will have to live uh, by it. But listen, there's uh, there, there's some quality coming through, and uh, I, I, I'm just thinking about Buta the other night. I thought he had a solid game. I don't want to go into the French players' names because I will literally uh, open a can of words. Uh, uh, um, uh, but like I say, they know what they have to work on, and the, and their challenge is probably getting continuity in the performance. And, and that's the bad thing about him. Uh, you, you don't get that. Yes, but awesome. But then uh, you want to follow that up uh, in consistency of performance. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Gavin. Nathan, you may ask your second question. Thanks, thanks, Zina. Um, <clears throat> guys, uh, you've performed in the, the guys have performed in the domestic league. Probably feel hard done by the, such as the likes of Evan Rose, Warwick Lan, Justin a few. You mentioned many players are injured and you wanted to build a squad depth. Did you perhaps have any thoughts, maybe resting a few individuals and adding those fringe domestic players who are on form? Yeah, no, like I say, they, they probably fall for me in the category of fringe players uh, where they are putting proper performances in. Or let's say they've played now four games, uh, I think four games of the uh, the URC. Uh, am I correct in saying four games? Yes, four games. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, four games. So they had, they had four games now in the URC. And I think if you look at it, uh, I think there was probably uh, one or two great performances uh, from the team's perspective. And, and, and yes, I agree with you. A lot of them are really uh, uh, like the names that you've mentioned. And there's some other ones, you know, that, that, have, that have put in some 
proper individual good performances. Uh, but like I said, the key thing for them is to to put in consistent performances now, to kick on, to make sure that their teams are, are starting uh, to perform, the team, not only the individual. So to almost get the team to also get the uh, quality performances uh, uh, through um, uh, taking ownership of their departments, taking ownership with their coaches. I, I mean, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yes, I, I agree with you that there, there, there is some young players that, like I said, they, that, that would that can be disappointed for not making the squad. But like I said, they, we are building squad depth just by purely uh, the, the guys that are injured. You know, although although it might not feel like it, it might not feel like okay with Peter Steff out, we are now getting uh, a guy like Quacha Smith uh, uh, is around about 16, 17 test matches, but he will now experience starting more, playing more test matches. A guy like Jasper Visa will get more test matches under his belt. So although although it doesn't feel like we're building squad depth and we're evolving the squad and getting experience in the squad, yes. Uh, Ivan is uh, playing brilliant rugby currently, but a guy like Jasper also, you know, and Jasper is now on 10 test matches. He, he will now have the opportunity to maybe add another three test matches under his belt, playing against Wales, playing against Scotland, playing against England and playing away from home uh, in Cardiff uh, uh, at Edinburgh and at Twickenham, which we, we, we will which will do wonders for his development as a player. So I think those guys... Uh, um, the, the guys on the fringes, the guys that you mentioned, they must just keep on knocking on the door, knocking on the door. That's that's what a guy like Jasper did. You know, he just kept on knocking on the door, knocking on the door. I think when he came in, when he came into our squad, he was probably uh, 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 number four. You know, uh, but then Dwayne got injured. Then uh, a, a guy like Dan got COVID. Then a guy like uh, uh, John Luke got injured, and that opened up the door for him. And then he took it with, with both his hands. So, so the guys, like I said, nobody has been. There's not a door slammed in anybody's face. You know, we still keep in watching him. We're still looking at everybody playing every weekend, and they must just keep on uh, pushing out those consistent uh, performances. Yander Quinning, is that a new question? Yes, please, Sina. You know. Jacques, if, uh, if we look ahead to the tour itself, um, obviously you've got three big test matches, uh, uh, strong teams. What would be your biggest challenge uh, in terms of the teams and what specific areas do you think can challenge your team? Yeah, that, I think that's a great question. I, um, so let, let's start with the Wales team. Uh, you know, I think uh, they, they're a team that, that they're getting eight British and Irish Lions play, players back. Uh, when I went through their squad, they've got some, so they've got massive experience. You know, if you look at their nines and if you look at their tens, uh, uh, the, the three tens that they selected in their squad, uh, Gareth Anscombe is the guy with the least experience and he's got 35 test caps. You know, the other guys are all close to 50 and, and, and Dan is close to 100 test matches. Uh, and if you look at their 15 Williams, I mean, massive experience, guys. So I think that's going to be the challenge. I think they've got good game, game drivers. Ken Owens, uh, a well-established British and Irish Lions. Uh, Alan Wynne jones well-established British and Irish Lions. So I think if you look at all three teams, not only uh, Wales, but Scotland and England, although Eddie has chosen uh, maybe a little bit of a younger squad, I think if you look at the spine, uh, if you look at Cowan Dickey, if you look at Mario Toje, if you look at Youngs, if you look at Farrell, if you look at uh, Johnny May uh, uh, on the one uh, uh, wing, I, I think if you look at both wings, they're over 50 test caps. So I think that's going to be the challenge. And we all know the Northern Hemisphere, uh, um, you, ca you can get a day where, where, where it's rainy, where, where wind is howling, where, where it's not conducive to keeping the ball in hand. So I think uh, if you look at the squads that they've selected, uh, even Scotland, you know, if you look at their nines, uh, 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 Price, well-established, uh, Finn Russell, uh, uh, speaks for himself. Uh, um, Stuart Hawk speaks for himself. Duan, uh, um, uh, they've got some quality uh, uh, players, and I think that will be the challenge for our outside backs. Uh, that's probably the one area where we, I, I won't say we are inexperienced, but if you look at the amount of test caps and experience we've got in our outside backs, I'm talking 13, 14, 11, 15, except maybe if you look at Billy, who's got 70 test caps, we, we, we're under 20 test caps there. So I think that's going to be a nice challenge for us in terms of uh, uh, what those three teams are going to bring to us. And, and on any given day, 
you might walk out there and it will be a beautiful day. The sun, must, uh, sun can shine and, and then if you play Scotland, they can take you from side to side with the quality that they have in their team and with Greg as their coach. Uh, same with, uh, uh, with, with Wales. So I think that's going to be the challenge for us is to adapt to whatever conditions we face with that particular day and, and then also uh, what that, thing, uh, what that uh, opposition will bring to us on that day. It's going to be a nice challenge for us, Kim. Gavin? Sorry, Zeno, is my hand still up? I, I thought it had gone down. Oh, okay, it's not a new question. Uh, yeah, sorry. Phyllis Sunday? Thanks, Zina. Um, Just one more question, Jacques. Um, how much work have you guys done now looking at some of the squads that have been introduced from the opposition that you're going to face? I know England announced their squad yesterday um, and it's got a couple of new guys in it. How much work have you and um, and, and the assistant coaches um, have, have put in trying to find out and figure out how some of those players might contribute from an England point of view, but also trying to, to mitigate some of those strengths that they bring um, and, and those threats that they bring to you guys as an opposition? Now, obviously, uh, uh, looking at the, the, the team globally in terms of, uh, and when I say globally, look at the whole team and the squad and how they played and the style of play, what they did in the Six Nations, uh, what they did now in the Autumn Series, or uh, uh, not Autumn, the July Test Matches. Uh, we, we did a lot, a lot of work on that, obviously, the whole Six Nations. Uh, but like you rightly say, I think the squads that played in June, if you look at the Welsh squad, it was a young team. Um, so, so I don't know how much we can learn out of that uh, performances. Uh, so, yes, I, I, I think... Uh, it's going to be it's going to be interesting now. And lucky, I think we're lucky in terms of uh, Wales playing uh, before uh, they they play New Zealand before they play us uh, in a test match out of the test match window. And uh, and Scotland are playing also a test match out of the test match window. So we will have some good information on them going into uh, uh, when we play them. So I think we're fortunate in terms of that. But yes, on the individuals, obviously the the stalwarts which we thought is going to be in the squad. We, we did some homework on them, but now uh, we will obviously have to start profiling the younger guys and the new guys that, they, that, that they've selected in the squads. Okay, it's time, I think, to switch to Afrikaans. We've got about seven minutes left in the, in the press conference. So, um, Percy, you can fire away. Zina, thank you so much for this opportunity, Zina. Um, Zina, before I ask my question to Coach Jacques Nina, but can I just ask you a logistical question? If I miss something, I would like to apologize. Are you going to be our port of call for, for this tour, man? Uh, yes, Percy, you can just contact me on Twitter, yes. Congratulations, um, Zina. Thank you so much. Um, baie dankie, um, I'm after uh, Jacques Nina, but Jacques, it's always difficult to have a press conference that will be able to get together with two two African questions. Maar niet te min. My first question then is then, Jacques, niet kortliks die samenvatting van van jou 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 denkwijze achter die groep wat jy samengestel het, manier. En in jou antwoord kan jy dat net verwijs na na Salman Murad, wat jy lees in die nieuweling en in die groep wat bring hy. Ek neem aan hy is hy soek 'n leerfigier, selfs na by die stomers. En en in jou antwoord is die antwoord ook net moontlik het verwijs na Morne Stein wat besluit het om die tuig neer te leen. Um, ja, Percy, uh, eerstens, as, ek denk as mens kyk na die, die, die squad, uh, of die, spa, die groep wat ons uh, gekies het, dan, dan het ons uh, uit die aard van die sake oog op, op uh, continuiteit in termen van, van ervaring, uh, want dit is een redelijke ervaring groep wat ons ge, uh, gekies het, uh, maar, maar uh, uh, ons is gelukkig in die een kant, dat alhoewel het een baie ervaring groep is, is het, baie, is het nog een relatieve jong groep, jy weet die, 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 die gemiddelde ouderdom van die groep is maar, is maar 28, en, en, en as jy vat oor twee jaar, sal die gemiddelde ouderdom van die groep 30 wees, wie jy weet, met, met redelijke baie ervaring, en ons dink uit die aard van die saak, ons gaan redelijke ervaring nodig hee in die wereldbeker, uh, dus ook om ons 
gedink het aan hierdie groep, en dan ook, ek dink ons het op elke vlak, jy weet, as jy gaan kyk na Stitte, Oksnitsje is een nieuwe jong, onervare ou, wat ons uh, probeer in die groep inkry, as jy gaan kyk na Slotte, Salman Murat is een jong, en onervare ou, wat nou sy geleentheid gaan kry, saam met ons, en, en miskien een bykie meer inlichting oor Salman, jy weet, hy is een ou wat dier ons strukture kom, ek was bevoorrecht genoeg om hom af te rig, uh, by de ISA skole en die ISA 120, en ek dink Salman is ongelukkig, jy weet, in termen van besering, hy was 10-1-1 uh, uh, deel gewees het van ons uh, groep, wat, uh, wat in die Britse en Ezele Lewis reeks ingegaan het, as hy nie besering opgedoen het nie, jy weet so, dit sal interessant wees nou om te sien of Salman daar die indien hy geleentheid kry om daar trappie op te maak na die na internationale rugby dan denk ek, jy weet, as jy kyk na loosvoorspelers, ons het ook Jasper Wiese is redelijk jong redelijk onervaren nog hy is nou by team toetsen, so ons het op elke vlak, Apilele Fassi as jy gaan kyk na die achterste driehoek, hy is jong onervare ou wat ons begin in die blootstel aan die springboek rugby, springboek kultuur en hoe ons dinge doen. So ek dink met die ervare groep wat redelijk jong is, is ons bezig om jonger spelers in die groep in te kry. Maar die aard van die saak is daar redelijk ervare daar ervaring daar, ek dink selfs op nege, jy weet, ons het verskye neges jong neges probeer, Sanene Luhamba was saam met ons, Jaden Hendricks het twee toetsen achter die blad, ongelukkig het besering om ook sy sy sy, kan ek sê, sy ontwikkeling in die wielegerei, en nou het ons vir Williams, Grant Williams, wat wat net, wat ek net met lof kan praat, in termen van hoe hy myself aangewend het in ons toer in Australasie. So, ja, persie, so dis min of meer een opsomming van ons groep. In termen van Moornijstein, ja, jes, wat kan ek sê oor hom, hy kan nie op een uitgepraat raak oor hom nie, en ek kan miskien sê, as een rugby speler, ek haal ek die Moornij Stein as een rugby speler, fenomenale speler, die bykie, of nie, bykie nie, die geschiedenis wat hy gemaakt het met hoe hy die Britse en Eerste Lewis twee keer gewen het, spreek boekdele van sy rugby speel ability, maar dan van die veld af ongelooflik hou, jy weet, in die laaste toer wat ons meegemaak het, die inlichting wat hy gedeel het met die jonge spelers, sy macht om inlichting wat hy het in sy kop, sy IP, as ek het so kan sê, hy was altyd bereid om het te deel met allemaal, en dan, ek dink die ding wat hy die aard van die, ach, wat sy besluit gestuur het in die en om om sy uitrede uit internationale rugby aan te kondig is 10 tegen 1 familie, jy weet vooral met COVID, het is moeilik om families in en uit die babbels in te kry en hy het rarig sy familie gemis en jy weet ons het gevoel daar is een rol vir hom voor en toe tot 2023, maar 100% is ons gemakkelijk met die besluit wat hy geneem het, allemaal van ons is in verskillende stadions van ons levens, en sy familie is vir hom belangrijk, en hy wil graag die laatste twee jaar wat hy, ek dink hy dink hy het nog so twee jaar, twee, drie jaar oor om te speel, en hy wil graag raak die speel, en hy voel hy wil het by die klap doen, en ons eerbiedig sy besluit. Zina, kan ek ook een opvolger gaan? Ja, per se, and then last question after that to Leeton, and then we'll wrap up. Thanks, guys. Baie, baie, dankie, Zina. Jacques, kan ek net vraag, een logistieke vraag? Ek sien meneer Rassi Erasmus is ook op die vergadering, gaan hy moendlik saam met julle op tier, op toer moendlik as deel van julle bestuur? En net die ander deel van die vraag is dan, het julle as SA Rugby doelwoos besluit om in Frankrijk voor te gaan brei, of is dit deel van julle langtermijn 2023 plan, of is dit een wereld rugby besluit gewees? Pussy, ja, eerstens op Rassie, ja, nee, Rassie gaan saam met ons op tuur, en hy gaan sy normale rol vervul, soos wat hy dit voorheen gedoen het, dan, ja, die, hoe kom ons Frankrijk toe gaan, ons gaan, ons het een oefenkamp daar, so daar gaan geleentede wees vir ons om te oefen, maar ons gaan ook een paar World Cup 2023, geleentede bijwoon om bykie die World Cup te bouw in Frankrijk, so dit is lekker vir ons om daar te wees en om bykie familiariteit op te bouw met die omgeving en met die area daar en ja, so daar dit 
is maar twee lede, ja, ons krijg een beetje voordeel daar uit in termen dat ons in Frankrijk gaan wees, min of meer in die tijd wat, uh, wat die wereldbeker gespeeld kan word, en ons raak beetje vertrouwd met hoe dinge daar werk, en uh, dit is ook een, een gulde geleentheid voor ons om een beetje voor te bereid, uh, voordat ons in die, um, uh, in die einde van die jaar toe ingaan. Lieten? Dankie, dankie Zee. Hallo Jack, um, Jack, ek wil net by jou um, hoor asjeblief, in termen van ouwens wat, wat aan die deur klop, um, hoe moeilik of hoe makkelijk was dit om, om hulle weg te laat sien dat jy focus op, op, op een gevestigde groep, en dan hoe lyk jy deur vir hulle kanse vir, vir, vir toetsrugby in moendlik 2022, ek, ek denk aan ouwens soos Kelrig Lou, um, Roan Norkie en dan ook um, Evan Roos um, by, by, by die stommes hieronder. Um, hoe moeilik of hoe makkelijk was dit? Nee, eerst leid, en dit is, dit is moeilik, jy weet, want hulle speel goeie rugby op die stadion. Maar ek moet sê, die, die groot, en, en, en ja, dit, um, hoe, hoe kan ek vir jou sê, al wat, um, ek denk hulle kan teleergesteld voel, ek sal gewees het, want die, die, die type uh, performances wat hulle op die stadium in die URC gee, uh, is goed, soos ons terecht sê, maar ek denk hulle, hulle uitdaging gaan nou wees om, om constante goeie uh, performances uh, uh, uit te licht. En ek denk, uh, hoe moeilik is het vir, hom, hulle, vir hulle om in te kom, so makkelijk soos wat het was, uh, of so moeilik soos wat het was vir Jasper Wiese, ek denk, uh, daar is geen deur toegemaak vir enige iemand nie. Um, uh, en soedra daar uh, beserings is, of soedra daar spelers nie op vorm is nie, en constant op vorm is nie, dan, dan sal hy ou moet kyk, en die spelers hou aan hardloop aan die deur, uh, dan sal hy ou moet plek maak vir hulle. Ja, so ek denk, daar is geen deur toegeslaan in enige iemand sy gezicht nie. Uh, daar is, uh, ons gaan anhou, uh, focus op hulle en kyk hoe hulle uh, die, die type spelpijl wat hulle uh, um, deliver dier die, dier die URC uh, so ja, nee, dat is nog glad nie, uh, dat is geen dier toegemaak vir hulle nie. 